uh, music on. Pretty please. Never mind, I got it. Testing, testing. Hello, everybody. If you can like and uh, if, if you guys can share the video feed, uh, if anyone needs deliverance, if you know anyone that needs deliverance from demons, just have them tune into this live. By sharing these videos um, and liking it, it'll put it on the FYP, the For You page, so other people um, that need deliverance can receive deliverance tonight from demonic spirits, from tormenting thoughts from soul wounds, um, addiction, freedom from any of those things. Jesus came to break every chain. The blood of Jesus breaks all generational curses, breaks witchcraft, destroys all evil altars of sorcery, Freemasonry, in Jesus' mighty name. I'm just trying to get my computer windows pulled up. Um... Wow. My wife was on the computer, so the screens are all changed around now. Oh, there it goes. Okay. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for uh, being on this live tonight. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. We thank you, Jesus, for the power of your blood, the power of your name. We thank you for your word that will not return void. Thank you, Lord, for the authority to cast out demons, to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the means of the enemy so that nothing shall by any means hurt us or anyone else here tonight in this life. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in our life. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being active, for the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father that's Matthew 5 it's Matthew 5 hallelujah if you guys can uh, like and share the live I appreciate it that way uh, anyone that needs deliverance can come here tonight in the name of Jesus I bind any demonic spirits I command every demon that's in them any demons at the sound of my voice to come up and out go in Jesus name the blood of Jesus washes over this life. Every demonic spirit has to come up and go out in Jesus' name. If you're feeling movement in your body or you're crying right now, you got chills, those are demonic spirits coming out. You're receiving deliverance. Just thank the Lord. Thank Jesus for delivering you. Every demonic spirit, whoever comes here tonight, these demons are going to leave. So just... You're going to get deliverance. You're going to get deliverance. Now, the important thing is that people understand is that to repent from your sin is what will keep you delivered. In other words, you have to go and sin no more lest something worse will happen. So when demons leave you, they're going to try to come back seven times worse. Con loro revesha. I bind every demonic spirit at the sound of my voice. I command every demon to come up and go out. Do not return in Jesus' name. Jesus loves everybody here. You are all loved by God. Every single one of you, has a uh, God has a plan written about you in heaven. Has a book, a book of destiny written about everybody here. It is the will of God that no man should perish. 
Nobody has to go to hell. Jesus wants, listen, God sent his son so that no man should perish, so that whosoever believes in him will have everlasting life. And sin is the open door that allows demons to come in and afflict you. This is how people get demons. Addiction, they get traumatized, so people go into addiction, or they're trying to numb out a wound somewhere, a soul wound especially. Just don't even pay attention to the chat. Just When these demons manifest, I'll tell you guys something. You can tell, you can tell that these demons don't like the anointing. I'll tell you that, they don't. Sometimes you can tell that God has a big calling on your life just by the opposition that you encounter. And sometimes this opposition is either, even from other Christians. I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen. In, in the short amount of time I've been doing ministry, I've been, um, you know, I've had people throw darts at me. Some of them will claim to be your friends. Watch out for people that are real quick to praise you. You don't, you don't need, uh, don't rely on man for your validation. Just let it come from the Lord through the Holy Spirit because I promise you guys, if you go out and do ministry, don't let religious people discourage you from walking into your calling. You heard from God when he told you what to do for, for whoever that's for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You said get wireless earbuds. Yeah, I have some. I don't like them though because they don't allow me to use feedback. I use reverb in my headset, so my wired headset lets me hear better. For whatever reason, when I'm on here, I like to be able to hear myself. I use the reverb turned on. But yeah, a lot of times the lukewarm Christians get very upset. They get very offended when you preach against sin. They'll start saying things like, oh, you're judgmental. No, I'm preaching against sin. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, Jesus wrote letters to the lukewarm churches and he told them, repent. I have this against you. You tolerate Jezebel who, who, who seduces God's people to commit sexual morality. When you start studying the book of Second Peter and Jude, and you learn about the deceptive, false teachers that are out there, they pervert God's grace as a license to commit immorality. There's people that are ter- teaching the Bible, telling you it's okay to live in willful sin. But it's not. Sin separates us from God. There's a lot of hyper-grace doctrines that are out there that are not the gospel. Jesus sat with the sinners, but he did not, he did not sin. We are supposed to be like Jesus. We have to come out from among them and be not lukewarm. Don't be deceived. Jesus said, I will spew you out of your mouth, if, out of my mouth if you're lukewarm. We can't be lukewarm. We can't be like the world. True love does not mean tolerance of sin. True love is to hate what God hates, which is to hate sin. You can love people, but you don't love the sin. There's a difference. See, it's important that we know that difference. When Jesus healed people, he said, come, yep, come as you are. He'll, he'll heal them. But he said, go and sin no more. So we must prove our repentance by a changed life, which is what Matthew chapter 3, verse 8 says in your Bible. Hallelujah. And um, just just be careful because there's people that, that believe, um, there's people that believe that Paul, is the only apostle you need to listen to in your Bible, and, and, and they say don't don't listen to anything else, or that only two books are for this dispensation, I just want to expose that. That's not true. That's not true. The Bible doesn't contradict itself. I see healings all the time. I see healings all the time, and they happen on this live. That's why you see so many demons manifesting in the chat, because the anointing is here to heal tonight. I bind every demonic spirit at the sound of my voice. I command every demon to come up and go out in Jesus' name. I command every demon to come up and go out in Jesus' name. I take authority in the name of Jesus Christ over every demonic and unclean spirit, over every witch, every warlock that's tuned in, every Freemason, anyone that's come in here to divide, deceive, or distract your powers. You've just here deceived. You've got no authority here. Satan, you're bound. I command every devil to come up and go out. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord commands every demonic spirit to come up and go out. In Jesus' name. 
There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. If you're struggling with addiction, confess that sin before the Lord. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, you need to you need to ask Jesus right now out loud to show you who it is you need to forgive. Whatever name comes up to you, confess it. Confess it. When you command a demon to go out, it goes into arid and dry places. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 discusses where demons go. And so so all demons are is they're disembodied spirits from the flood from the from the Nephilite race of hybrid humans that were around in Genesis chapter 6. God sent the flood to destroy the hybrid race of humans in Genesis 7 because of the sexual sin that was rampant on the earth. Very similar to to what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah's day, the sexual sin, it's the same sin is is also mentioned in in Romans chapter 1 28 through 32. The demonic spirits that are on the earth today are proud and arrogant. They're narcissistic demons and they celebrate pride and sexual sin. This is why there's no new sin under the sun. It's all the same sin that was around in the days of Noah. They were altering DNA. They were trying to change humans out of being in God's creation. And that's what they've always been trying to do is create hybrids. This is why you have all these transhumanist agendas and all these wicked things behind the scenes in terms of the one world order and them trying to force everybody to inject stuff into their body that's not good for you. They're trying to change people's DNA. And, and, they're, and they're trying to cause people to have cancer and get sick. That's what, that's what all that stuff's about. They're trying to take over. and, and con- It's all about power, control, and manipulation. What they, at the very... What they're afraid of is, is that you'll come to the understanding and the knowledge of the truth that sets you free and start walking in the anointing. They're afraid that you'll start walking around like Jesus did when he walked this earth, taking authority, binding and loosing, casting out devils, because they have no real power. If a group of spirit-filled Christians was running to go, in, to go into to Congress... And, and take judicial powers, those demonic spirits would have no choice but to go and vacate the area. This is why you have schools today that are trying to get children to change their gender. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Don't let anybody discourage you from doing ministry. Don't let people that are like Saul discourage you from stepping out and being bold in faith. I just want to share, for whoever this is for, when you step out and start doing ministry, start casting out demons, listen, I've, I've had people attack me because there's a cash app up on my bio, but I don't ask for money. And they don't know what I do with the money. If I ever get any, anyway, hardly anyone sends money. It's very rare. But again, I've had people basically try to say, listen, just don't even listen to what people say. Don't even care what people say. Just don't even listen to the to what people say. The people that will come out and try to be your friend the right away and, and cling up real close to you, they end up criticizing you behind your back with a knife in their hand. Watch out for people who want to flatter you. That's what I'll say. You know. Yeah. Watch out for people that are easily offended as well. It's toxic. Bad company corrupts good character. That's in your Bible. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Hallelujah. Spread this live if you'd like to see people get healed, set free, and delivered. And tap the like button, please. That way we can get on the FYP. I think once the likes go above 25,000 or something like that, then it goes on FYP. I don't ask for money on here. I don't. I don't. I don't come on here and do this for money. But people will, if they see, they see a cash app. They see anything they can. They'll take anything they can to try to persecute you. It's unbelievable. Peter did the same thing. Peter spoke by Satan, and Jesus rebuked Peter. Jesus rebuked Peter. I can do whatever I want. I mean, this is my life. 
But I don't do it. I choose not to. I just choose not to. Watch out for people that want to control and manipulate you. That's a, that's a very dangerous, narcissistic spirit. Jezebel does that. She tries to control and manipulate people. And she loves to be up in the lukewarm church. Jezebel is a spirit that likes to get into the pastor, the pastor's wife, the praise and worship leader. The way that demonic spirit gets into somebody is through compromise. By getting them to live in sexual sin, look at pornography, smoking marijuana, smoking cigarettes, doing drugs, something like that. Right. Yeah, I don't I don't charge anybody for deliverance. You know, there's churches that charge $500 an hour for deliverance sessions. I don't charge anything. <clears throat> if someone wants to give a love offering, I receive it, but I don't I don't charge anybody money. <clears throat> but it's the people that come out and they try to praise you right away and, and get friendly with you then those will be the ones making posts about you the next week that criti are criticizing you and attacking you. <clears throat> I also think it's interesting that people want you to be poor. They want you to like, how can you do ministry and take care of the widow and the orphan if you have nothing? If you Are you supposed to live under a bridge? Are you supposed to live under a bridge and take care of other people? How can I help you if I can't even pay my phone bill? These are, I mean, these are just things to think about. So, you know, I don't have a problem with people getting paid that do full-time ministry. How? Why? Why is it wrong for people to get paid? Why is it wrong for your pastor to get a paycheck? Why is it wrong for your pastor to live in a house and not live under a bridge? How can he do missionary work? How can he do evangelism if he's supposed to be poor and not have a car? Is he supposed to walk everywhere? These people that come against money so hard, they don't realize it's not money that's evil. It's the love of money. It's not an evil thing to have money and use it as a tool to stay alive and do ministry with. These religious people that think that money itself is evil, they're pious. It's called piety. Look up the definition. P-I-E-T-Y. Piety. It's just religion. It's religious. Satan wants to keep Christians poor so you can do nothing for God. There's no reward for burying your talent and doing nothing for God. There's no reward for that. There's no reward for doing nothing at all for God. That's called being lukewarm. So. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Uh, deliverance is for everybody. I make sure I tell everybody what deliverance is about. Second Peter 2 makes it very clear um, that if you get set free and you get delivered and come to know Jesus and you return back into sin, it says you're a slave to whatever overcomes you. So if people do return back into sin, it's sin. It's sin that lets demonic spirits in and into afflicting people. That's what lets, that's what lets uh, demons attack people is living in sin. We're not supposed to live in willful sin as, as children of God. <clears throat> I decree and declare boldness over your life. Um, in Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus washes you, setting you free. In the name of Jesus, I decree healing and increase over your ministry. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I bind up any demonic spirits off this individual, Jade. In the name of Jesus, I command every demon to come up and go out right now. In Jesus' name. If there's any sin that you're involved in that's allowing these demonic spirits to attack you, confess it right now and repent of it. If it's unforgiveness, confess it. When people are under a constant attack, like it's always an attack, like 24-7 spiritual warfare, it's usually because there's sin. There's usually some type of a legal right for a demonic spirit to oppress you like that. 
it shouldn't like I, there there is persecution i understand but like sometimes it's 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 a it's a little bit you know we have to walk in kingdom authority i'll tell you this if you're if you're walking in your authority if you're walking if you're walking in your authority and you're casting out devils and you're doing what we're supposed to be doing those those demons want nothing to do with you they won't be attacking you like like that. I mean, I'm I'm very I'm very direct about this. Um, okay, here's First John. Here's First John five. What people really need is discipleship. First John five eighteen. We are convinced that everyone fathered by God does not make sinning a way of life. Because the Son of God protects the child of God, and the evil one cannot touch him. So I bind any demonic spirits at the sound of my voice. I command them to come up and go out. In Jesus' name, every demonic spirit has to come up out and go. In Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus over their bloodlines. I plead the blood of Jesus over any generational curses. If you need to renounce Freemasonry... I would recommend doing that. If you've had parents that were in Freemasonry, if you've ever been involved in the occult, witchcraft, New Age, yoga, Reiki, healings, tarot cards, psychics, mediums, pornography, smoking cigarettes, vaping, marijuana, any of those things are open, opening doors to allow demons to come in and attack you. So just confess any sins to Jesus right now. Say, I renounce those in Jesus' name. And just decree things with your mouth. Start decreeing and declaring that I am no longer addicted to cigarettes in Jesus' name. I'm no longer addicted to pornography in Jesus' name. Your tongue is a rudder of the ship. The ship is you. Where are you headed? What are you speaking with your mouth? Your tongue is the rudder. You can choose to bless or curse. Hallelujah. <clears throat> a lot of people don't under, don't even know they have a demon. They think it's normal to live in uh you know, live in live in disobedience, live in rebellion, to live in addiction. That's not normal. That's demonic. We're not supposed to do that. We have to repent in Jesus name. Repent means to go and sin no more, lest something worse shall happen. Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, you'll obey me. We're supposed to obey God's word. So we should not be living in sin. So again, God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Which means to turn away from sin. Sin is what separates us from God. Yep. To repent means to turn away. In Jesus' name. John or Luke 3:16 John answered them all I baptize you with water but one who is more powerful than I will come the thongs of the, of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie he will baptize you with the holy spirit and fire then all at once a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes it separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them they were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired to speak in tongues. Empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages they had never learned. Acts chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. <clears throat> yep, repenting. Uh, so if you repent from something, it means you don't do it anymore. It, so if someone's like, oh man, I keep repenting from the same thing, then you haven't repented yet. You're still doing it. That's That's not repentance. So... You don't have to find out the hard way that there's that there's a wrong way and a right way. Just get into the Word of God and find yourself there. Amen? Again, people need discipleship and deliverance. Deliverance is, perp is, is true. They need deliverance. But what happens is I'm found is, is pe if people get deliverance but they're not discipled, then they don't understand they can't go back into sin because they're being taught in these lukewarm churches that, oh, I'm a sinner, therefore I'll always be in sin. That's false. That's not the gospel. God. The, so here's what God wants people to do. He wants you to come as you are and then change, which is repent. Come out of being lukewarm. Come out of loving the world and not don't be like the world anymore. 
Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says we are to be imitators of God. That means we should be like Jesus. We are called to do the greater works of Jesus. If you're falling and you repent and you're struggling, whatever it is you're struggling with, ask Jesus to take the desire to do that sin away. And that's exactly what the Lord will do. He'll take that desire away. My personal testimony, I struggled with Adderall addiction for 10 years. I was addicted to pornography at the age of 8. I looked at pornography from 8 years old to age 35. And I asked the Lord to take that addiction away, and he did. I was addicted to Xanax, Gabapentin, Vyvanse. I was on all kinds of medication. Marijuana, THC, edibles. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. God took all of that away. In the name of Jesus, I silence every demon. I command every demon to come up and go out. In Jesus' name. There's a spirit behind pharmakia. Look up what pharmakia means. For the people that have seen this in dreams, I've seen visions in the spirit in dreams where the Adderall I used to take, they have a silver cord attached to them. And that silver cord's a demonic spirit. It's the spirit of pharmakia. Every demon come up and go out in Jesus' name. There's a reason why these lukewarm churches, when someone comes in for deliverance and the pastor doesn't do deliverance, they just refer them to a doctor to put them on pills. The doctor doesn't fix them. The pills don't solve the problem. It's a band-aid. They usually get worse. If you guys can like this and share this live, we get people here that need deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for leading people here tonight that need deliverance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yep, there's there's spirit behind medication, behind pharmacia. People don't like to hear that. They get offended. People can get very offended by that message. They get very offended by that. Some people just want their ears tickled. They want a form of godliness that denies the truth, denies the power, but that's what religion does. Religion is, is all scripture and, and no power. Every demon come up and go out in Jesus' name. Demons, uh, so I, I do believe a demonic spirit, if a demon has access into your life because you're living in sin, you're living in disobedience, then I believe it does affect the animals. I've seen, I've seen demons lift candles and then levitate around the house before. I mean, I've seen demons do some stuff, but they have to have legal rights to do that. Like you have to be, you know, living in sin for that stuff to happen. So demons prey on people that don't fight back. They want you to think of yourself as a victim and give up. That is the demon's goal. That is what demons do. They try to persecute you and get you to get on medication so you're no longer sober-minded and you make bad decisions. This is what demons want you to do. They want to hijack your body. They want to hijack your mind. So if they can get you to medicate yourself and go to these doctors, then they can get you to do anything else. They can get you to compromise. Demons want you to compromise. Well, if they can get on medication, maybe I'll get them to look at pornography. And the next thing, it's cheating and it's taking away, stealing. And, you know, Jesus said the path is narrow. Those demons' goal is to drag you off of the narrow path. I bind that demonic spirit. I command depression to come out and go in Jesus' name. I bind every demon at the sound of my voice. I command them to come up and go out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. To be kind is to tell people the truth that will set them free. That's what kindness is. It's not tolerating sin and telling people to stay as they are. That's sugar-coated preaching. That's watering down the gospel. That's not, that's the whole problem that's going on in these lukewarm churches today. That's why you don't see any deliverance taking place in these big churches where they, they just have 
big screen TVs and smoke machines and skinny jeans and lattes. Nobody's getting deliverance. Nobody's casting out devils. They don't have any presence of God there because they've watered down the gospel and tickled people's ears by only telling them about love or grace. They don't tell you you better hate sin and you got to repent. Casting out demons is for today. Those demons haven't gone anywhere. The same demons that were around when Jesus was casting demons out, they're still here today in people. Nothing has changed. There's a spirit behind pharmakia. Look up what pharmakia means. It's sorcery. Depression's a demon as well. God does not make mistakes. God doesn't put someone in the wrong body. Satan attacks people's gender identity. God is not the author of confusion. People that struggle with gender identity usually have been traumatized in their past. Then they start looking at pornography or they go down all these different roads and their mind starts getting conditioned by the pornography. That's where the gender confusion comes in. That and then you've got these teachers in school trying to put children on hormones. It's demonic. God's not the author of confusion. People that are traumatized, here's what happens. They're traumatized and they turn to doctors to help them. The medical system fails because they don't know how to fix a spiritual problem. There's a demonic spirit and then someone goes and gets put on pharmacia. It's not going to help. Only Jesus can heal the trauma. People have to turn their lives over to Jesus Christ. He will heal you. But that requires submitting to God. Phar pharmaceuticals is not the answer. If you research the people, there's people that come out of the trans community all the time because they figure out they've been lied to. They had, de they had demons and they needed deliverance. That's why they're rebellious and angry and triggered. These people that have triggers and pronouns... It's because they have demonic spirits inside of them that get very offended by the truth. Those demonic spirits have to go, come up and go out in Jesus' name. I don't water things down. I do not water things down and tickle people's ears. I'm t I'm tell I'll tell you the truth that, that maybe your pastor has never told you. Yep, rebellion is witchcraft. That's true. It, it, we got to label things for what they are, and then you can diagnose problems very quickly. See, here's what happens. People get coddled. They come to these big, big churches, and all they hear about is a friendly, feel-good message where there's no repentance, there's no power, there's no deliverance. Jesus wants to heal you. It's all fake. It's all a lie. Nobody has multiple identities. When you hear about people say their identity cycle, those are their demons. When someone says they have altars, they have demons inside of them. When I cast those demons out of people, they don't have altars anymore. They, them, they, theirs, thems, they leave. You don't need pronouns after deliverance. Yep, pride. The Bible says God is opposed to the proud. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. His skinny jeans and latte, smoke machines, laser shows. People need deliverance. Yep, the, the medical industry is a joke. Especially once you realize that pretty much all sickness comes from Satan. And then you see that deliverance is why you were sick for so many years and why you're addicted. It all came in through the trauma and the unforgiveness and the sin. I bind every demonic spirit at the sound of my voice. I cast out every demon right now that's at the sound of my voice in Jesus' name. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, if you have, if you feel bitter in your heart, you're wounded, here's what you need to do. You need to pray after me. Repeat this prayer. 
Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. I ask you to take away any unforgiveness out of my heart. I ask you to take any case the enemy has against me in court. I forgive everybody that's ever hurt or wounded me. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you prayed that, now you have the authority to command every demonic spirit to go in Jesus' name. So I take authority in Jesus' name. I bind every demon at the sound of my voice. I command the demons to go. Come up and go out in Jesus' name. Every demon, come up and go out in Jesus' name. Every demon, you have to leave in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mark 9.29, where it says this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Jesus was referring to unbelief because the disciples couldn't cast out a devil. In Mark chapter 9, you don't have to fast to cast out devils. The fasting he was talking about, the kind that comes out by fasting was their faith. They had unbelief in their hearts. Nobody knows when the rapture is going to be. As a matter of fact, I don't talk about the rapture. I don't teach the rapture because if people just focus on the rapture, all they're doing is being selfish. Nobody else gets helped. Nobody else gets deliverance. Nobody's re-equipping the children or teaching the children how to live and obey the word of God if everybody's focused on the end times. So Jesus does not know when he's returning. The Bible says that. We don't know either. So. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> First John chapter 3 verse uh, 4 discusses the character of God's children. Anyone who indulges in sin lives in moral anarchy. For the definition of sin is breaking God's law. And you know without a doubt that Jesus was revealed to eradicate sins and there is no sin in him. Anyone who continues to live in union with him will not sin. But the one who continues sinning hasn't seen him with discernment or known him by intimate experience. Delightfully loved children, don't let anyone divert you from this truth. The person who keeps doing what is right proves that he is righteous before God. Even as the Messiah is righteous... But the one who indulges in a sinful life is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God was revealed was to undo and destroy the works of the devil. Everyone who is truly God's child will refuse to keep sinning because God's seed remains within him, and he is unable to continue sinning because he has been fathered by God himself. Hallelujah. So if, if someone comes in here to de- try to debate or argue about scripture, this isn't the place for it. Just if you're going to want to debate, go go make your own room and teach somewhere. <clears throat> this is a room for people to receive deliverance and healing. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. God is good. Everyone who is truly God's child will refuse to keep sinning because God's seed remains within him and he is unable to continue sinning because he has been fathered by God himself. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hyper grace teachers that that tell you it's okay to stay living a life of willful sin, but that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not at all what the Bible teaches. There's a lot of people in this app, on on social media in general, that teach hyper grace doctrine, um, like once saved always saved, and and things like that 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 imply you can live a a, a sinful life, and it be okay. But but sin has consequences. <clears throat> sin has consequences. When people live in sin, they'll have demons. God is good. God doesn't want anybody to have demons. God doesn't want people to suffer. He wants to heal people. He wants people to repent and obey God's word. That's how we know we love God, by obeying his word. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If we die with him, we will live also with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. This kind of talk spreads like cancer, as in the case of Hymenaeus and Philetus. They have left the path of truth, claiming that the resurrection of the dead has already occurred. In this way, they have turned some people away from the faith. The Bible warns all, t all over about false doctrine. <clears throat> we plead the blood of Jesus over Christine's daughter. Decree and declare healing over that relationship in Jesus' name. I speak to that condition in her life. Any demonic presences have to go right now. In Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus speaks over Christine Moran. We bind any demonic spirits off of her life and command them to come up and go out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I speak healing over Sammy in Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus washing over him in Jesus' name. The devil really hates you. That's a good thing. That should be, we should all, every Christian, we should be very hated by the devil. Our, our picture should be in hell, on the post office wall of hell, for sure. Um, if we're doing our job right, the, the, the devil hates us, the demons in the world hate us, the demons and the people around us hate us. Yep. If you walk with now now those demons will leave people alone sometimes, you know. If I don't know, if you're living in sin and lukewarm and you're not trying to do anything for God, that's what they want you to do. Demons want people to just come to church on Sunday and, and then do nothing. They want people to not do anything for God. So we have a lot of religion these days that are that's out there. That's got to go away. Religion's a problem. Religion's powerless. There's no power in religion. It's just a form of godliness that denies the power of God. Yep. That's right. That is absolutely true. But he, this is John 10, 12, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd who's whose own the sheep are not see actually this is king james i'll put it on nlt there it is A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. So this is what's happening in some of these big churches where people need deliverance and they have demons and they come to the pastor. And the pastor just says, oh, go to a doctor and get on pills. 
They don't tell them to repent from their sin. They don't lay hands on them and cast the demons out of them. Some of them might not even pray.